understanding what is DevOps is nothing but a combination of two teams or two terms, let's say Dev and Ops, right? So a uh, combination of development and operations is DevOps. But what exactly is happening at the back end, right? Let's understand this in detail. I'm sharing a black screen. Right. Yeah, whenever we talk about DevOps, it's like a combination of two terms, Dev and Ops, right? So, it's very clear like two teams are involved in here, isn't that? So, if you talk about development, we all know that developers are involved here and Ops teams is nothing but admins or operations team. Let's say admins or Ops operations guys, right? And the main task of developers is to write the code to achieve the functionality or achieve the expectations of the client coding, designing the application, designing implementation. And also I'm including testing here. Of course, there'll be a separate testing team who will test the application and then it goes for delivery, right? So the major task of developers is to work for developing an application, write the code, design the application. And ops teams have to look after the servers, right? services running on those servers, networks, logins, and so on, right? So let's assume, yes, these are the two teams and these are the major tasks of them, right? And like if you see here, operations, the major task of them is to they work on the server, services, networks, logins, and all. Let's suppose developers have to write some code or develop something, right? They would be, uh, let's say, they would need some new operating system or some new server, Right, ops team, developers would request the ops teams and ops teams should serve the request of the developer. This is how it works, right? Developer uh, team cannot just pin up the infrastructure on their own or, or not. So whatever requirement developers will have, like regarding the infra, like let's say they need a change in the infra or else they need a new server or anything, they would request the ops teams and ops teams would serve the request, correct? And uh, so this is the uh, basic thing where, where <clears throat> DevOps can come in to picture means there is a gap between the teams. Why there is a gap? Let's assume, okay, developers have requested for some operating system. Ops teams should serve the request. Before ops teams serve the request, they would do a lot of checks. If this change is made to the server, is the infra going to be stable? Is it going to impact any other server or any other services are going to be down? All these checks would be made by the ops teams before they serve the request, which obviously takes some time. Developers are meanwhile waiting for the change they need, right? Hence, there arises a gap between them because developers think that ops teams are taking too much time to serve the request. Ops teams think that developers are always requesting something which they are not sure of, right? There arises some gap between them because of no proper collaboration, no proper communication. And there is one more major reason the other reason is, uh, let me talk about a simple example. Let's take any shopping application or any online application. Let's assume an online application like Amazon.com. Right? So we are using, end users are using this, uh, using the application means there were so many teams involved at the backend. Correct? So, so many teams are involved with the backend. And here we were talking about the main teams like the development team, ops team. And let's say, let's include QA also, like testing team, right? So there were many teams involved. And now here I'm highlighting three teams. Let's say dev team, QA team, and ops team. These three teams, even though they work for the same application, their core competencies, their skill set are completely different. Agree with this? Developers will have knowledge of some programming languages, right? Or else they might be having knowledge about some database and so on. Testers will be having a knowledge about test tools, automation testing, or some test frameworks, and so on, right? Ops teams would be working for admin part, and let's say infra management. In short, infra management would be taken care by them. Their skill set is completely different. Their core competencies are different, but they still work for the same application so that end users can use it. I'm using Amazon.com means so many teams, lot of work happens at the backend where I'm highlighting, let's say, these three teams. 
and these three teams are dependent on one another one uh, dependent on one another like let's say development team if they need any infra they would request the ops teams right same is the case testing team if they need any operating system or any services that should be served by ops teams or uh, before ops teams serve the request like we just discussed they'll do lot of checks which obviously takes some time and dev team or qa team doesn't have an understanding of why ops team is taking lot of time and there is a gap between them because their core competency skill set are different they don't understand challenges of others why they are taking so much time and ops team doesn't understand why developers need these changes isn't it obviously it takes a uh, means if there arises some gap so how to erase this gap how can we make these teams work together with proper collaboration with a proper understanding so that they could work effectively and efficiently any solution from anyone or if you have got an understanding into it or if you are already working into such methodology anyone like how to overcome the gap between different teams who work for the same application or same product how to eliminate this gap is the question hello yeah uh, the, the... okay so how to eliminate the gap between the teams any idea any thoughts yes we were talking about why devops came in so one of the reasons of why devops came in is to eliminate the gap between the teams so that the teams could collaborate well they could work with a proper understanding with a proper communication so to eliminate this gap devops came in that's one of the reason what are the other reasons why devops came in again let's assume i'm sorry so let's talk about another reason we were talking about three teams right like dev team qa team and ops team okay talking about a methodology without devops so let's say developers are ready with the code once they're ready with the code like completed testing they will send the application or the code to testing team they will test the application they may use different ways of testing different levels different types that's a different story so testers would test it and let's suppose okay they identified some bugs what, they identify the bugs who should fix it who will fix the bugs means defects you all know bugs right bugs are nothing but defects back in team sorry back in team works works the fix the bugs so they will send it to developers right these bugs or defects should be sent to developers developers will again make the changes fix the code this process keep on continuing or repeating right till the application is defect free or bug free then only it's completely ready once it is ready this will be hand over again to ops team it's a responsibility of the ops team to deploy the application deploy the application means for anyone new to these terms let me tell you deploying the application means in layman terms or in simple terms run the application on the server or install the application so that end users can use it i'm using amazon.com means it's running on some server right so yes uh, so it would be deployed so it's a responsibility of the ops teams to deploy it to deploy it ops teams should know which versions of the software required first of all what are all the softwares that are required to run this application then they should know uh, have a clear understanding of which version should be used and they should also have an understanding of providing high availability during upgrades of the application right and if something is broken they should be able to fix it and bring back the application isn't it without end users knowing it isn't it like we are using amazon.com facebook netflix and so on have we ever seen the downtime have any one of you seen the downtime for these applications seeing that application is unavailable the page is still loading page loading is different reasons but let's say application unavailability is very rare isn't it very very rare i would say am i correct Yes. even we don't know like some upgrades are happening at the back end some uh, changes are happening at the back end as an end users we don't experience it how is that possible because there were teams who are handling this who are taken care of those things right 
So ops teams would take care of it. But which software should be there for this application? Ops teams doesn't know, right? Developers, let, let's say they might have used Java or they might have used .NET, whatever it is. Ops teams doesn't know that or else development teams should give clear instructions of what software they should use, which versions of the software they should use. So whenever uh, dev team and QA team, after completing their coding and after testing, they would hand over this application to ops teams along with the instruction document, which will have all the uh, requirements, all the compatibilities, all the versions required for this application, right? So a dev team and QA team will hand over the application along with the instruction document. Yes, the instruction document will have what are all the softwares needed, what are all the versions needed and all. But again, ops teams, have to check, let's say ops teams are executing the instructions given in the instruction document. Sometimes it might not be working. Chances are the, there, it might not be working. It might be working on few servers. Like, like let's say the ops teams have to deploy it on Windows, Linux, and different operating systems, different versions, and so on. Might be working on some servers, might not be working on all, right? And also, let's say, if something is broken, it might not be like if you don't know the correct compatible version of the application, it might be uh, broken at times, right? Let's say, okay, they have installed this a Java application on some server one. Let's say they have used Java 11. Later on, Java got upgraded, like it's a Java 17 and application fails here, right? All of these things should be taken care by. There are a lot many challenges, right? Because the instruction document shared by dev team may not be understood by ops teams because like I said, their core competencies are different. Or else if understood, it might not be working on all servers. It might be working on some. There might be, again, challenges arising because of the upgrading of software. And lot many things they have to check in. And obviously, deployment becomes slow. Deployment process is becoming slow because of this. Again, because of different skill set, different core competencies. Deployment process is very slow. How to speed up, how to accelerate the velocity of deployments. That's where again DevOps comes, comes in to accelerate the velocity of the deployments. Because companies need deployments should be faster, right? End users should see the new features. We, they want to de deliver some new features to the application. End users have to see the new features immediately after development and testing, right? So, so how to make this process faster? How to eliminate again here the differences of like understanding the instructions given by other teams and like how can they collaborate or understand each other very well? How to increase the velocity of deployments? Again, that is taken care by DevOps. How and all we'll discuss. I'm talking about why DevOps came in. These are the two reasons. We'll talk about other reasons as well. Were these two reasons clear for everyone? Is this much clear, whatever we have discussed till now? Any queries? Yeah. Right. Then now let's talk about the uh, the third uh, uh, reason why DevOps came in. We all know the software, I mean, traditional software methodology, right? Like, let me begin with SDLC. Software Development Lifecycle. What is the Software Development Lifecycle? Waterfall method. Yeah. See, software development lifecycle is nothing but sequence of phases involved in development, like gathering, analysis, design, coding, testing, and delivery. If anyone new to this, you don't need to worry about it. It's nothing but different phases involved in development. Here, my idea is not to teach this, just to give you an overview of it. Like it's nothing but software development lifecycle. It involves different phases which help in developing an application. First requirements will be gathered, requirements will be analyzed, designing, coding, testing, and delivery. And here, yes, here each phase goes one after the other. Yes, by now you might have understood I'm talking about waterfall methodology. The typical methodology which served the industry for decades but it's having lot many challenges. Dev team, both dev team and ops team face challenges because of this waterfall methodology. 
like dev team see as the name says waterfall means it just goes in one direction let's say you are in coding there is no possibility of going back to analysis or design that's not possible so it just goes in one direction and there are a lot many challenges posed by this methodology like it's very slow only after complete coding is done and testing is done it would be delivered all at once methodology is very slow Let's say coding is completed now, testing would begin after six months. Meanwhile, developers might be working on new code. Then testers comes with the bugs in the old code. Fixing the bugs in the old code and working on the new code will cause a lot of pressure to developers. Right? So it's a very slow methodology. Also not flexible. Meaning like I mentioned, let's say you got the requirements in 2024. They'll be freezed. And the entire product would be delivered in 2026, maybe mm -hmm. after two years without accepting any changes or any uh, modifications or anything in between. If that is the case, it doesn't work in today's market. It's a customer facing world. Business changes very rapidly. Client requirements would change in this two years a lot. The model should be flexible enough so that if client comes with some modifications or some new requirements, it should be able to accommodate. But this model doesn't do that, which doesn't serve the purpose, right? It's not flexible enough. Also, complete software would be delivered all at once, like I just mentioned, after two years. By then, client may don't need it anymore, may not need it anymore, right? So because requirements change completely, you are not able to accommodate that. They don't need this product anymore, right? So these are all the few challenges faced by developers. Similarly, there were challenges faced by ops teams. I'm uh, talking about everything manually here. As it is a slow process, during this process, they should maintain the servers up and running. Maintaining the servers running manually is a huge challenge. Right? Also, poor configuration management. Configuration management is a separate concept. We are having a separate dedicated chapter for it. Here, let me tell you, configuration management means having a detailed history of what is happening on which server at what time, like what are the changes uh, happened on the server kind of. You need to have a detailed history of it, right? With manual process, here I'm talking about everything manual, so this is not possible. Also, monitoring is a challenge. If you have one or two servers, you may manage monitor it manually, like health of the server, health of the services, application, and so on. But imagine huge infrastructure. You need to have a very good monitoring tool, 24-7 monitoring tool to monitor the infrastructure, to have a good control on the status of the server, services, pipelines, and so on. So these are all the challenges faced by ops teams. How to overcome these challenges? Yes. So why DevOps came in to overcome the challenges of traditional software methodologies like waterfall. That's a third reason. But before DevOps came in, before DevOps came in, there is another methodology which came in to overcome these challenges, which is nothing but Agile. You might have heard about it, right? Agile methodology came in. But Azile was successful only to a certain extent. Like it can overcome the challenges of developers, but not ops teams. So to overcome the challenges of both the teams, DevOps came. But because we were talking about Azile, like it, it could solve challenges of developers. Let me just go through a little bit of Azile here. How Azile could solve the problems of developers? Anyone? Any idea? No idea. It's no idea. Development and testing go parallelly. Yeah. Yes. Azile was successful to overcome the challenges of developers because of this thing. Like development testing will go parallelly. Let's suppose take week one. In Azure methodology, code is not developed all at once. It would be developed in bits and parts, in chunks. I mean, let's say, okay, developers will write, will first develop a chunk of code A, right? Immediately, this chunk of code A will be going for testing in the next week. 
let me say, okay, week two, right? This A will be going for testing. Right here it is developed. Immediately next week it is developed. Meanwhile, testers are not sitting idle. They will be developing another chunk of code here. They are developing this, right? So if you notice here, every week development and testing going on parallelly. Do you see that week two testing is happening as well as development is happening? And also at some point of time, let's say on week three, all the code will be combined and tested, right? Then only it makes a complete product, right? A and B will be combined and tested. So then only it makes a complete product. Means if this keep on continuing. And if you see here, development and testing are happening parallelly, iteratively or continuously, whatever you call it. Because of this, there were a lot of advantages. Because of this, code is always stable and ready for release. Code is not all delivered at once after two years. Every week or every alternative week, there will be a release. Maybe every 15 days, there might be a release. Code is always stable and ready for release. Bug fixing is became faster. If bug fixing is became faster, means let's say, okay, code is developed this week. Next week, bug fixing is happening. Testing is happening immediately. It could be very faster. Testing done at later stages would be expensive and it would be time taking and it costs a lot. But now here, every week testing is happening. So bug fixing is faster. Sorry, I missed the sentence. Bug fixing is faster. Code is always stable and ready for release, right? Also, code is developed in chunks and parts, not all at once. Also, it's a very flexible model, very much flexible. Because, see, every week they might be coming up with new requirements, new modifications, which can be accommodated because every week you have these phases repeated, repetitive, right? So, so because development testing are happening parallelly, we can say, yes, this model implements continuous development, continuous testing, and also, like I said, every code developed will be merged into the system and it would be tested, which is called continuous integration. Any new change developed will be integrated, will be merged into the system and entire system would be tested again, right? So because Azile implements continuous development, continuous testing, continuous integration, it could overcome the challenges of developers. But challenges of ops team were still there. And... We were going to learn about this in detail. We are having a separate topic, a dedicated topic for this. We'll do hands-on on this as well. Hands-on on this as well in the sense we will not write the code. Developers will write the code. Testers will write the test cases. We automate this process. I'll come to that part, but this is just a high level or a big picture of why DevOps came in. Whenever you are learning any technology or any any uh, skill, if you are learning first, you should know why this is useful, where it is useful, right? That's what we were concentrating on, why DevOps came in. Then we will talk about what exactly it is. Are we clear with this part now? Any questions from anyone? No. Right? So this is why DevOps came in. So now, uh, like, what exactly is DevOps? And let's focus on what is DevOps? How DevOps is implemented will be learned from tomorrow with hands-on. It's not something which we can learn in a day. How to implement it practically with the real scenarios, we'll do the hands-on from tomorrow. DevOps is all about the complete hands-on. It's not at all a theory. As it is a day one, I'm trying to give you a big picture of the entire course. So I'm just overviewing, giving a heads up or a big picture of each uh, topic here. So... Let's talk, try to understand what is DevOps. DevOps is nothing but continuous development, continuous testing, continuous integration, along with the continuous deployment and continuous monitoring. This is what is DevOps, right? Meaning, let's say developer have developed some code, okay? Some code is developed. This, this should reach the production server automatically. This is what is DevOps. How, do, how does it reach the prod server automatically? That's where this CI CD process comes in. CI CD pipelines, that's what is called continuous development, continuous testing, continuous integration, continuous deployment, and continuous monitoring. 
right? This process is where DevOps team is involved. Means like if you know the process of after development until it reaches production table automatically, if you know this process, you can become a DevOps engineer. Remember after development, right? Means remember DevOps team is not going to write the code. There is a separate developer team who will write the code. There is a separate uh, testing team who will write the test cases or who will test the application, right? What do you do? You should automate this process. Okay, developers are ready with the code. You work on the CI-CD process and take it to production automatically, right? That's what organizations need. That's what companies are looking for without, like, they need the deployments should be faster. Means, let me just break it down and make it more simple. Let's say developer have make a small code change or else they have developed a new, new feature. In the Facebook, they have developed some new feature, right? Whenever code is ready, it would trigger the CI-CD pipeline and this pipeline would deploy it on production servers. Of course, in the, the pipeline first deploys it into lower environments like dev environment, test environment, then deploy it onto production servers automatically. <clears throat> and this automation is available 24-7 automation. Initially, to design this CI-CD pipeline, more people are involved, more people should be working. Once the CI-CD pipeline is developed, it just a trigger. Developer write the code means automatically it will trigger the pipeline and hit the production servers. We are going to create this CI-CD pipeline on multiple applications in the course. Like we are covering it for two projects or two applications. One is a monolithic, another one is a microservice application. So you will get an exposure to the real world. Right? So who can learn the CI-CD process? Anyone can learn it. You could be a fresher. You could be an experienced person. You might be a developer for 15 years. Now, if you are interested to work in the CI-CD process, yes, you can switch your career. You are a tester. You can switch your career. You are a database admin. You can switch your career. You are a middleware person or you are an infra guy. You are ops person manually. You are you used to create the applications and deploy the applications manually. Yes, you can learn this automation process and become a DevOps engineer. Whoever have this skill set can become a DevOps engineer. What are the skills you need to have? What are the tools you need to have? We'll talk about it. This is the process of a, a part where DevOps comes in. There will be so many questions and a lot of blurriness over DevOps because it shows like it's a combination of development and ops team. There's a lot of confusion. Should I learn development? Is there a DevOps person write the code, test it and do everything? No. You understood now, right? What DevOps person will do? DevOps person will work on this automation process of taking the application to production. This is the major or the uh, primary role. There are also other things. I'll come to that part. But is this much clear? So, why everyone is switching into DevOps? Because, yes, they need faster deployments. Because of this, companies could deploy the uh, uh, features very quickly, right? Without manual intervention automatically to production. Facebook is the best example for this. Any feature developed will be hitting the production servers automatically without manual intervention. All the different phases are handled automatically. It may sound risky, but yes, that is handled. Facebook is the best example with the DevOps that is possible. Everything will be automated. Testing, building, deploying to lower environments, approving the changes, then deploying to prod will also like automated. So faster deployments, that what, that's what companies need. 24-7 automation possible, yes. Also, because we are automating the process and a lot of uh, tools and uh, involved, manual power will be reduced, like manpower is reduced. Obviously, the whole thing is automated, which is more effective. Here, manpower is reduced in a sense. Initially, to create the pipeline, you need more people. After creating the pipeline, you don't need them. Of course, they will be working on different activities. I'll talk about those. Another important skill set develop, uh, DevOps team should have. So, yeah, so automated, right? So, no manual dependency. That's what company is looking for. Now, you, as you know, almost all the gigantic companies are already implementing DevOps. In a couple of years, every company will implement it. So the strongest person with the skill set will survive in the market. It's a right time to invest your time and learn such tools to stand in the group. And also, let me tell you here, 
um like a uh, uh, like devops team will be automating this process right let's suppose okay you are a developer you still want to become a developer you have passion to passion for development you just want to continue your career as a dev uh, developer only but still they need to learn this process because some time back i'm talking about right dev team would hand over the application to ops team right they are handing over the application to ops team after testing and they'll hand over some instruction document. This instruction document, because of a lot of challenges, ops teams may not be understanding this, and a lot of challenges and deployments become faster. Uh, sorry, deployments were becoming very slow. Now with the DevOps approach, this is eliminated. How is it eliminated with the DevOps approach? Because this is actually for a later discussion in the course, but I'm just giving an again an uh, overview. The way they hand over the application change, in the old uh, traditional approach, this might be the case. But now, they were handing over the application in the containerized format. Means dev team will not, earlier dev team might be handing over the artifact, like they may be sharing the var file or a jar file if it is Java or whatever, depending on your application, they might be sharing the artifact directly. But now dev team are containerizing the application and sharing it. Again, what is containerizing? We will learn it. Okay, just understand the way the application handover got changed. Means the ops, uh, dev team are handovering it in a containerized format, in the Docker image format. Means dev team, even though you are a developer, you should know how to containerize your application using Docker. Then ops teams would deploy it as a Docker container. Obviously, they should know Docker. And that's how deployments have become faster. Because of this, there is no underlying struggle or a heads up overhead for ops team to struggle for the compatibilities and fix the dependencies that overhead is eliminated but this is for like i already mentioned this is for discussion at a later point but just understand the way of development means the way they hand over in particular in specific when i say the way of development the way they hand over the application change the way the deployments were happening completely changed which eliminated the overhead or else the underlying challenges of environmental issues, compatibilities and all there by DevOps becoming like so famous or popular because of faster deployments, efficient deployments and automated deployments. Hope you got a better idea now. Who should learn it? What you should learn? I mean, uh, like uh, whether you should learn coding or not. Hope I uh, answered all those queries. Any questions? No. no. Here, the term continuous is important because continuous development means, yes, developers have keep on writing the code maybe every week, every day. It would be tested continuously, integrated, deployed first to lower environments like a dev test and then to prod continuous monitoring. They use some monitoring tools to test it and the feedback is. And so the term continuous is very important. In the multi, like in a day, if you take a particular day, in the in that day, this CI/CD pipeline might be triggered n number of times. Whenever they make a code change, yes, every code change could be deployed to prod through this automation process. So this is what is DevOps. If you want me to differentiate them, let's do that. Let's take a waterfall methodology. In waterfall methodology, you used to have development. After development, testing begins. After testing, deployment. Apologies for the typos. Please ignore them. So development, testing, and then, uh, sorry. Yeah, development, testing, and then deployment, and then monitoring one after the other. Right? Then came Agile. In Agile, you have development testing happening parallelly, iteratively. So continuous development, continuous testing, any code will be merged and uh, uh, tested so continuous integration but then deployment is manu manual and then comes monitoring right and then came devops so with the devops you have continuous development continuous testing continuous integration continuous deployment deployments were also automated every change can be deployed immediately to the production servers continuous monitoring right that's the difference also, you can differentiate with respect to the teams. In Waterfall, I'm talking about three important teams like development team, QA team, ops team. 
they were working in silos in separation each team doesn't understand the challenges of others and so on they work as a separate team right the developers doesn't know the process or the challenges of ops team and so on same is the case with ops team doesn't understand the requirements of developers why they need the changes and all they're just working in silos as a standalone team in SL, because development testing is happening parallelly, there is a proper collaboration. Just a second, please, one second. I'm sorry, there is a call from office actually. Some instants are going off. Okay. It's not a major, that's all right. So, uh, yeah, coming back, like um, we were talking about. Um, yeah. So, uh, talking about the different teams, right? So, for Ezal, if you see, there were like, we have a development team and QA team again, because both these teams are working in parallel with the proper collaboration. They were like they were working as a single team. Hence, I'm naming it as dev team. When I say dev team, QA is also included, but ops team is left in isolation. You got the point, right? That's why we say dev team. When we say dev team, like QA also included because they were working with the proper collaboration, mutual understanding. So, uh, dev and ops, ops team was still left in isolation. And then when you come to DevOps, even this dev team and ops team were brought together because every week, every day you have this process, right? Like every day, like you have continuous development, testing, deployment. These, te these three teams work together with a proper collaboration and with a proper understanding, which is DevOps, right? See here, when we say proper collaboration means it doesn't mean that ops team will go and write the code, but they know the process. Okay, what developers are doing, how they will hand over the application. Okay, they were going to containerize it. Similarly, ops team, dev team understand, okay, why ops teams need some time or what are the challenges they have, how they should containerize and share the application. So they know the challenges of others. They know the process of others because they work as a same team, same team in the sense in the real world, it's not that development team, testing team, DevOps team would be same team, but they work with proper communication or continuous communication, we can say. As a DevOps person, in a day in, day out, we work or we communicate with the developers a lot. Same with the case with testers. Communication is very important. We communicate with these teams very effectively, which is an additional role of uh, DevOps team. And vice versa, obviously, dev team communicate with us with the challenges or like they containerizing the app and all. 
So that's how they were brought together. There is no gap between the teams. Hope this is clear for everyone. Why DevOps came in and what is DevOps? By now, this should be clear for all of you. Yes. Why DevOps came in and what is DevOps? And we'll deep dive into the topics of continuous development, testing, integration, how to create the pipeline, like what are the skills that you should have. All of these things are coming in. And also another thing is we hear that in the projects, okay, like uh, someone say that, okay, we are implementing DevOps. Uh, from tomorrow, we are going to be. It's not something which you achieve in a day. DevOps is a continuous process of improvement and implementation. By now, you might have understood DevOps is not a tool. It's not a programming language or it's not a, a, some script a kind of. DevOps is a methodology. It's a process which would take some time. It, you cannot achieve in an overnight. It's a continuous process of improvement and implementation. Right? Also, some time back, I'm talking about what is uh, when I say like we are with the major parties working in the CICD. In the initial part, more people are required to design this. Later on, it's completely automated. Is this the only task of DevOps people to create CICD pipeline? Obviously not. There are a lot many things. Like it is also the role of developers to create the infrastructure. Right? How do you create the infrastructure? There are infrastructure management tools, infrastructure as a core tools like Terraform. You should also provide the infra. In the beginning, we discussed, right? Okay, ops teams need some operating system. DevOps team would provide that. Uh, I mean, ops team would provide that and they have to create the infrastructure manually and all. But now you have Terraform, you have configuration management tools like Ansible. Even these are the challenges of DevOps. Not only that, each develop, uh, DevOps teams also work for deployments, right? How do they deploy? They should know Docker, Dockerizing or containerizing the application. And for high availability and for uh, auto scaling, they'll be using advanced tools like Kubernetes. Right. Again, this could be on-prem or on cloud. Anything could be on-prem or on cloud. I'll take up this later, a little later, whether it is on-prem or on cloud. So there was a lot of things, responsibilities or the tasks which DevOps teams should handle. Managing the infrastructure, managing the deployments, not only that, monitoring. They would be responsible for setting up the monitoring part, sending the feedback to the respective team, see that the application is highly available or send the alerts when something is going down. All of this should be taken care by. Right? Yes, I'll share the syllabus document uh, Prasad and uh, I'll share, I'll walk you through all of that. We will split this and we'll go through each of these tasks and responsibilities as we progress. Right? So now that we got an understanding of why DevOps came in and what is DevOps, uh, let me take you through the presentation. So this is the presentation like uh, notes for you after the class to refer and go back to the content. You can go through this like what is waterfall methodology drawbacks. Whatever we discuss here will be present in this presentation. You can go through it and refer like a notes after the class. Why DevOps came in? What is DevOps? And the differences like I have shown you. In waterfall, you have a design, then coding, testing, one after the other. But in Excel, it's continuous process. In Excel, in DevOps, even deployments were continuous and so on. So now coming to roles and responsibilities, like I said, yes, you have to work on CI/CD pipelines. And again, there are different ways here. Let me also give you an idea of it. There could be a DevOps team. This does. Okay, there could be a DevOps team uh, who build the pipelines from the scratch and who uh, manage and maintain those pipelines. That could be one aspect. Like, like we call it as DevOps development. DevOps development, uh, DevOps team, uh, development team doesn't mean that they write the code. They are the one who created the pipelines, who work for the pipelines, who maintain it. There were other use cases where developers themselves will create the CI/CD pipelines but if their pipelines are broken or if they need any help, any support, that's where they reach out to DevOps. That's called DevOps support. There were different roles in DevOps. You might be getting a job or you might be choosing a role where you work for a development or else support. 
you got the difference, right? So pipelines might be already there, even developers or else there could be teams who will uh, provide their infrastructure with Terraform themselves, but to support them, there could be a DevOps. It could be either cases. You might be support, you might be working in a support role or you might be working in a development role, whatever it is. To fulfill the responsibilities perfectly, you should know the concepts, the tools in and around thoroughly, which would be served by this course. It could be development or it could be support. You might be creating them from the scratch or you might be working on fixing the broken pipelines or fixing the infrastructure challenges kind of. So whatever it is. Uh, uh, this uh, And another thing is in some companies or else in some projects, like I just mentioned, developers will be taking care of creating their CICD pipelines. Right? And, and they will request the support to fix it. But in some companies, there will be only one DevOps team who might be who might be working on creating the CICT pipelines as well as supporting them. Complete uh, uh, care will be taken care by DevOps. It depends. Sometimes the developers may not be having idea or understanding on DevOps tools. Then in that case, there will be a separate DevOps team uh, will be there who will do everything for them. In some companies, uh, like a startups particularly, there will be development team who will... Uh, uh, be uh, just working, focusing on their development, whereas DevOps team will take care of containerizing it, uh, deployments, everything, creating CI/CD pipeline from the scratch, right? It could be either ways. You should be ready in a way that you should be able to work on any given role. But the whole point is you should learn these tools thoroughly as a DevOps person. If you are a developer, you have to learn Docker, still learn Docker, Jenkins and all because when pipelines are broken and when it is the part relevant to developers, again, you have to work on the fix. So, PICD pipelines, everyone should learn it. And certain DevOps rules, everyone should learn it, even though you don't want to become a DevOps person. We will deep dive into these things as we progress, as we work on the pipelines, we get the scenarios so that uh, we'll refer to them at that point. So skills, what are the skill set a DevOps person should have? Here is the skill set of a DevOps person in brief. Like you should know a version control system, or build automation tools, continuous integration tools, containerization tool, infrastructure as a code tools, container orchestration, container continuous monitoring and cloud computing services. So under each category, we are covering one tool, which is a market leader. Like we are covering Git under version control system, Maven under the build tools, Jenkins as a continuous integration tool, Docker, Ansible, Terraform, Kubernetes, monitoring tools like Prometheus, visualization tool as Grafana, Uncertain, AWS services. Under each tool, we are covering one. If you master, sorry, under each category, we are covering one tool. If you master one tool under each category, that is enough. Like you might have heard about version control system means you will hear, hear about Git, SVN, TFS and so on. Learn the market leader, which is very widely used. If you learn one tool, other tools work with the same analogy. Other tools in the same category, I mean, work with the same analogy, similar concepts. So switching across them would be easy. Mastering one tool is enough. That's what companies are looking for. And these are the tools we'll be covering. And another thing is here, the main agenda of this course is DevOps. You'll be thorough with the DevOps tools, DevOps concepts, DevOps strategies in this course. And DevOps is a methodology, like I mentioned. It could be applied on-prem, on-premise servers, or else it could be applied on cloud, right? Irrespective of the platform, DevOps could be implemented. In this course, you will get an exposure how to implement DevOps on on-premise because we'll be implementing it irrespective or else without depending on any cloud services as well as as an example of one cloud, we'll be also implementing it on AWS. Just a sec, please.
sorry. Yeah. So uh, uh, it could be on-prem or it could be cloud. We'll be covering it on-prem as well as on cloud. As an example on cloud, I'm covering AWS. So AWS services, which are required for DevOps, to what extent and what are all the services we need, we, I have covered all of them. The course is designed by me with my personal experience as I have worked on the multiple projects with my personal experience, the course is designed so that it would help out the candidates who are uh, looking for a move into DevOps, switch their careers and work in the projects comfortably. With that uh, idea in mind, the course is designed. Same as the case with the AWS services, like what are all the services that are needed? I have added them into the course. And uh, also, like I, again, a very general question, which we see very frequently is, should I learn AWS or should I learn Azure or GCP, which one and all? And whether we are covering DevOps on AWS or Azure. Again, I want to make it clear. DevOps is a methodology. Irrespective of whether it is a cloud or on-prem or whether it is AWS or GCP, the methodology is same. The process is same. Right. And if you talk about one cloud like AWS, yes, we have certain services which will help us. If you learn one cloud and DevOps on one cloud, that is pretty much enough. Because if you know one uh, cloud, there would be similar services on other clouds and that's how you should be able to switch in. That's what even companies would look at. When I sit in the interview panel, this is what we would look at. We would not look at people, whether you know Azure, AWS, GCP, or no. if you know one cloud, we expect that the candidate would be working with other clouds, can be comfortable working on other clouds. That's what we look at, right? So uh, rather than learning all the clouds and all, try to be flexible, try to learn the concepts thoroughly and try to switch over to other clouds as and when needed. Because the reason for this is here, it's a like there were tools emerging every day in the market, right? It's every day we are getting a new tool, new clouds are emerging. You can't be uh, very much uh, fixed to one tool or one cloud kind of. Today it's AWS, tomorrow it might be something else. Right. So that's where companies are looking for your flexibility and how well you can switch on to new clouds or new tools at any point of time. So learn one cloud, learn one tool under each category, master them, expertise them. That's a more than enough. Learning all the, let's say, version control system, learning Git, SVN, TFS doesn't help you in any way. Master one tool. Similarly, master one cloud services to implement DevOps. Any questions in here? Ritesh, I think I answered your query. Like uh, uh, there is a question from Ritesh. Can your course applicable to Azure? I mean, minus AWS uh, Amazon services can apply rest of the knowledge from the course to Azure. Uh, uh, absolutely, Ritesh. Like I said, in Azure, if you are implementing DevOps on Azure, there might be certain similar services which we'd be covering for AWS. So you would get the analogy, yes, and you could be comfortable applying them. And uh, there's a question from Abbas. How many end-to-end -end projects, for instance, Java, Node.js, Python, Angular, React.js, will there be taught in live class to get accustomed to us? And simultaneously, will they be taught on all cloud platform? Okay, let me answer this query. Again, like I'm telling, the development means the application could be a Java application, could be a Node.js, it could be a Python, Angular, React, or whatever it is. DevOps is a process and methodology and it remains same. So we don't learn a separate DevOps for Java, separate DevOps for Python, no. Whatever be the code, whatever be the application, your application might be developed in any language, right? The DevOps tools, strategies, methodology remains same. So from a developer perspective, you might be asking in development courses whether this project is covered, whether this application is covered with a so and so J unit framework or .NET framework kind of that's not applicable here. This question is not applicable for DevOps at all. Like I said, if your application could be developed in any language, irrespective of it, we implement CI CD strategies. That's what is our focus. So you don't need a separate DevOps for Java, separate DevOps for Python applications and so on. After cover completing this course, you will be able to implement DevOps for any application. And as an example, in this course, I'm covering two applications. One is a Java monolithic application. Another one is microservice. Because the architecture is important here, not the technology. We are covering monolithic application. We are covering mon uh, microservice application. 
Any monolithic application, you can use it. Any microservice application, you can use it. That's how we look at from DevOps perspective. Hope I answered this question. Can I get confirmation? Yes. And also another thing, yes. You would be able to do it on-prem or else on cloud also after completing this course. Am I clear with the, this query? Anyone else have the similar questions or similar lines? How no. to take the complete entire course as Dinesh? How to take entire course? Course starts from today, uh, Dinesh. Like it is continuous. Like it would be continued uh, from tomorrow with the regular topics. Today we have learned why and what. Tomorrow we are going to get started with how. Complete hands-on will be there from tomorrow at the same time, 7.30 to 9. It would be a regular course. And there's a question from Priya. Can you please let me know course registration process and how to complete the payment after the class? Uh, yes, I'll come to that part. Just give me a couple of minutes, right? In five minutes, I'm going to jump into that part. And Bharata says, uh, I'm completely new to DevOps and cloud. Don't have basic knowledge even. Can I get intermediate level AWS knowledge? Of course, you can have Bharat. Yes. Just let me uh, walk you through this presentation for five minutes and, and then I'll jump into the queries. Just a few minutes. Okay, this is the core uh, skill set. Any queries, anything you see, this is the DevOps CI CD pipeline I'm talking about from the beginning. Like whenever developer write the code, see, this is where developers writing the code and then comes continuous builds. What is building the code and all we'll see where build automation tool comes in, continuous testing, continuous deployment, using all these tools and then monitoring. This is just a very big picture. We will be zooming into each part here, continuous development, like developers, once they write the code, how it will trigger the pipeline, why uh, uh, continuous build tool comes in, right? And here, when you see testing, it doesn't mean that we are testing it. Testers will write the test cases. It could be in Selenium or UFT or JMeter, whatever it is. We will automate those test cases in the pipeline. And we use Docker to containerize it, deploy it on Kubernetes cluster, configuration management with the Ansible infrastructure as a code through a form, and then monitor it with Prometheus and Grafana and send the feedback. This is the high level picture of CICD. We will be working on each section. We will zoom into each part, learn in and around. Let's say tomorrow we are going to start Git. I will start with the very basics. You might be having very experience in Git. You might be new to the Git. Everyone will benefit out of it. How is an experienced person will benefit out of it? Because I'll be covering advanced concepts on Git and also how to implement Git in reality in DevOps, how you integrate it in the pipeline. So that's how even experienced people will, you might be having experience in Git. You might not be having experience of using Git in DevOps, right? So that's how experienced people will benefit out of it. That's an example. Every tool the same is applicable. From basic still advanced concepts so that everyone, irrespective of your backgrounds or your technical skills, everyone will be able to clear the interview, any interview question on Git and they should be working with any concept in Git. That's how it works, right? That's how uh, we work with it. So that's how the course is designed. And then comes uh, uh, build automation tool Maven. So we'll be learning Maven, like where is it used? How is it used as a developer? Actually, it's a developer tool. But what perspective we should see? Developer tool doesn't mean that you need coding for this tool, just some command. So how you see from DevOps perspective? Then how do you automate the test cases? Then how do you containerize it using Docker? Every tool will go from the basic still advanced concepts. After every tool, there will be complete hands-on assignments, um, quizzes, a lot of interview questions on every uh, tool that will be shared across which you should go through. That's how you will master every tool. So this is the big picture. And uh, yeah, CI, CD pipelines will be covered on two applications. This pipeline, completely creating this pipeline will take two months. That's the duration of the course. Every day, we'll build up this pipeline stage by stage. We'll go learn the tool, come back and integrate it and create the pipeline and see how Terraform is used to provide the infrastructure, how you use Kubernetes uh, for uh, deployments and high availability, auto-scaling, all those advanced features of Kubernetes will be covered. As personally, I'm a 
certified Kubernetes professional. I'll be covering all of those here. And remember, this complete CI/CD pipeline could be implemented on-prem as well. Cloud is not mandatory. DevOps is a methodology. You could implement it on cloud or on any, uh, sorry, on-prem or any cloud. As an any cloud, as an example, I'm covering this with AWS services as well. So this is also covered. Means this pipeline creation would be on-prem as well as on AWS cloud. Understood? So deep diving and zooming into each section is the agenda from tomorrow. So that's about the content and the topics for today. But let me walk you through the course content and how you will get the notes and all. You can go to this website and uh, an answer to Priya's question. Priya, here is the number. This is the Mr. Raj. You can see this WhatsApp number on the website. You can reach out to him for any queries on the fee structure or anything. You can just talk to him. And that's where you can complete the registration process, right? Now, coming here, see, this is the syllabus. Okay, the, here is the syllabus. Again, this is a brief uh, content only, I would say, because if you see Git, there are a lot many things covered under each topic. If you take Git uh, reset, we'll be learning again multiple ways of reset, like hard reset, soft reset, mixed reset, and so on. All of that I have not drafted here, just the... Uh, brief uh, topics I have drafted here, right? And then if you just scroll down, you can see the complete content of Kubernetes. Likewise, for any tool and also in particular Kubernetes, you'll be getting an additional advantage of covering managed service. EKS is a managed service which is used in real time. Almost 50% of the production clusters are EKS clusters. So I have included this managed service which is far advanced and the a uh, paid service on AWS, right? Here we'll be covering again the advanced topics like auto scaling, CI/CD pipelines on EKS cluster, and so on, right? Uh, for the same is the case with any tool. You can go through the content here, and particular AWS services were all listed here. One second. AWS for cloud. Here are the AWS services: ECR, ECS, EKS, and so on. And there are certain services which are specific to DevOps, code build, code deploy, code pipeline, code commit, even these will be covered in the course. And there are few more missing on this page, like Orgo CD will be covered. GitOps tool Orgo CD will also be covered. That is not updated here. But yeah, here is the course content. Now, here is the um, LMS like a portal for your learning, you can go here for all the lab exercises, right? For every tool, if you, let's say, if you start like tomorrow, we'll be starting with Git, including we'll learn what is Git, why Git, Git architecture, then Git hands-on. Day-wise, complete hands-on is there. One or two days might be available for public, but from third day, it would be with the private access. Uh, so you can see all the content here. And every day you will have assignments. Here are the assignments, right? And also quiz portal, quiz for your, for you to recollect and register the topics. Every day quiz will be available and you can take it in number of times and validate yourself. We will be also checking on the scores and helping you out on improving those scores. That's how you can evaluate yourself and go on. And here are the interview questions. Interview questions with respect to each tool. These are not just the dump from the website. These are designed and uh, like uh, collected and curated here for from my personal experience and from the candidates there were many candidates in every batch who are selected for who have got the new jobs who have taken the new role as a devops engineer so this these are the interview questions collected from various sources like from the students and from the personal experience as we sit in the interview panel so these interview questions have got a very good feedback where they have cleared, many students have cleared their interviews with this. So it's a very good content, I would say. And the gem on this page. So here again, they were uh, like, we have different levels, beginner level, intermediate level, advanced level and scenario based. So go through that as per your job description, as per your experience levels. The same is the case with 
every tool you have all the interview questions different levels for every tool and also the skill and role based interview questions which are like scenario based real interview questions i think i answered many queries any more questions how many hours of practical learning will be there regarding devops and kubernetes since kubernetes is going to pa going par in market i am newbie and no tech savvy since zero knowledge of whatever is being taught even in the demo class how and i have so many queries you can feel free to put all your queries abbas kubernetes will be covered from basic till advanced you can claim up to 3 to 4 years of experience as well but again like we are covering the content we are giving you complete hands on skill set and all how you understand or how you gain the expertise is from your end means you have to like we are looking for your dedication and your time we need these two things from you if you get put some time a dedicated time and effort from you throughout the course for these two months yes you can through the course and you could benefit out of this course yes aws basics will be covered saloni obviously here are the aws content you can revisit it and also just a second right so this is all about the course and uh, like uh, uh, the details of it i would like to uh, invite mr raj to take over from here he would be the best career counselor or who can guide you or any questions you have regarding the like you're uh, switching your career or the course content or how the structure of the course is going to be he can also help us raj is here one one question uh, is the recording available daily so for example yes. in case of 10 to 15 minutes break you know can we, can we catch up with that recording obviously you can complete recording will be provided every day and these recordings will be provided for lifetime access every day recordings will be available because we have people across the globe from different time zones we have passive learners like they don't attend the regular class because of different schedule time zones and also people who work in night shifts kind of so yes we have recording which facilitates everyone to go through and uh, get benefit out of it okay thank you yeah hi this is raj from pt devops hi raj you can share the details of the course with the participants Yeah. So, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, if we have, uh, see, uh, I am the training coordinator here. So, I will help you in the career guidance. For example, if you if you want to switch from uh, development or admin to the DevOps, or if you have any gap in the previous experience or uh, after education. Or if you have, the, uh, if you're actually uh, uh, new to the DevOps, or if you are non-IT uh, non people, so I will guide you. So how to get that, how to fill the gaps. So we will uh, provide you the uh, details of the, the providers who provide the certificate, uh, cert certificates, all these things. And also, uh, see, uh, here uh, we have the, this is our website, uh, where you can get all the details. So if you want to go with the syllabus, you can click on this. So you'll get uh, all the syllabus details, all the course curriculum. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, the students who are enrolled to the live training, so they can click on that. So they will get the, uh, so the, they'll get the details of the uh, course, all these things. Uh, one minute, I think so, that's uh, So this is the first curriculum. So where you can go through with the each topic and uh, if you have, so for example, uh, if you want to uh, know the what are the questions that you'll get on the DevOps introduction. Also, what is DevOps, all these things, you can click here. If, uh, on operating system, you can get the interview questions here. So on the, get, so for each and every topic, you can navigate and get the interview questions here. So when come to the live training, uh, this one, so the new students can register here. Uh, the already existing students. So uh, generally, the existing students they have to, how how they have to use this uh, uh, website. 
to get the also we will share the live recordings to the students so here you can find that live recordings okay so the lab material the interview questions interview videos and quiz portals and sample resumes so you can uh, click on each and every tab and you can get the those details let's take the example of live training uh, live class recordings so your batch uh, you belong to the october batch so all your videos will be available here so if you belong to september batch you can click here and you will get those videos uh, but remember so the students who uh, who got enrolled so these videos will be uh, able to visible to those students who are registered so because we are uh, access, we are providing this access to the uh, through youtube in private okay uh, and another thing so when go to the uh, sample resumes So here you will get the sample resumes, uh, even, uh, even though, so we'll help you uh, how to create a resume uh, so according to your previous experience uh, like this, we'll help that one. So how, what are the things we need to keep, all these things. So even uh, of your own, you can also create yourself by using this uh, sample resumes. So you can download it and you can uh, change the format and change the details of your own. Okay, and I don't have the access to this one. Uh, I need to log in. Yeah, you can see. So it is downloaded. You can check this. You can just replace your uh, name and all these things and. Uh, do some modifications here. So you can upload this into the now three. And when come to the lab exercise, see, uh, this is still we are working on this lab exercise. That means, uh, see, after the class, so after, after the class, so normally what we will, what the students will do, they will go through with the video, recorded video, which we provided after the class. And then they have, they will prepare their own notes and then they will practice that. So to save that, it, it will take two to three hours or four hours. Some people, they, it will take five hours. So we don't know. So it's a, 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 how much time the uh, student will continue to spend on that. So to save that time and to practice uh, uh, as soon as we in an easy way. So we are preparing, uh, still we're still in, uh, in, uh, in the construction process. So we are preparing one by one. So if, for example, tomorrow we are going to start gate. So you want to practice the gate, whatever we taught in the class. So click on this lab assignments. Here you can get the, so for example, day one. So day one, what are the topics we covered and what are the uh, lab practice steps we were given here? Just click on this assignments. Uh, you'll get all the details uh, in the step-by-step, -step. just copy and paste that. So that also it works, but you need to understand the, what is the content there. See, it is a day one. So in the day one, what normally we will install the gate, uh, so on Windows, on Mac, uh, how to install that and how to update the EC2 instance and how to configure the gate. So uh, a sample project, create a sample project. So just you can simply copy and paste this one and you can do that. But uh, just uh, it is better to type all these things and understand that what is the MPDR, what is the CD, what is the gate in it, so what it will do. Just you need to understand that. So that means no need to spend more time to write the notes, to write, uh, to prepare the steps and to understand that. So it will help you a lot. And another thing. Okay, when come to the interview questions, you will have a, uh, a bunch of interview questions here. See, these are the topic wise. So Linux, Git, and uh, all these things is the topic wise. So let's take generally. Uh, so how? So when you apply in the Nokri, so uh, so generally what they will do? So they will uh, the HR will explain about the job description. And then, so if the, if the resume, resume match to that job description, or uh, then they will, uh, uh, they, they will, uh, they'll schedule an interview. Okay, right. So how uh, we need to match that uh, job description uh, with the with our resume? So we have to collect the first. We need to go through with the job description, and we need to modify your resume according to the requirement of the company. For example, if there, for example, let's take example here. Uh, 
So go to the skill based interview question. See, actually, this skill based interview questions means just we took the uh, roles and responsibilities of the DevOps engineer, which having which which required five years of experience for this one. So generally, the uh, roles and responsibilities and skills will be like this will be in the uh, uh, in, in the in the website in the job in uh, job website. Just take example. So here we have the technical architect in access XI. So just click on this. See, here you can see the description. This is very important to us. Just we need to collect, uh, um, according to this requirement, we need to match our resume. So we'll help you how to do that. We'll help all these things. And again, so this is their requirement. So how to create the interview questions on this? We'll help you to the students. So what will be the possibility of questions that you'll get on this task or the roles and responsibilities or the skills, or whatever it is. So here we give, uh, we give some sample uh, questions, uh, interview questions on this, uh, uh, this requirement. So these are the question answers. You can see. So this is the, the, uh, the normally the interviewer will ask the uh, resource. So this is the general questions here. It depends upon the, their skill set and their roles and responsibilities of whatever they mentioned in the uh, job portals. And so the uh, skill set, uh, this is check to level two to level three. So the next one is after first round, the second round will be the red. So what type of question, what type of questions they will ask? Uh, in the second in the second round. So uh, this help you uh, to clear your interview uh, to, to your interviews all these things. And another thing is, the main thing is uh, you need to practice aggressively. So that is very important. So if you practice, ninety percent of the questions will come through your lab only. So because we are teaching in the way that with uh, with all real time scenarios, whatever we are doing in our companies, in our job uh, regularly. So we teach, uh, we took that scenarios and we are teaching here. So that helps you a lot. So here you can find the faculty profile. So you can find here, and this is the student, this one. So if you have any questions uh, regarding the career gaps, all these things, you can contact me or you can ask here also. So we will clear that. Anybody have any questions? Raj, can you show us how to enroll to the live trainings? See, already uh, you registered. That's why you have got the messages and you are here. See, uh, if you want to complete the registration process, like payment process, all these things, you can ping me on this number. Okay. So I will share you the key details. So you can pay and uh, you can uh, share your uh, Gmail ID. So we'll provide you access to all these things to this website like this. You can see this, right? So most of the things you won't get access if you are not registered. Okay. So once you register, so you have to go through the registration process here. Uh, that login details will provide you the access to this one. You have to log into that and you can access uh, most of the things here. Can you share your number again, please? Yeah, one minute. I'm sharing in the chat. And uh, after the registration, the students will be uh, 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 will create a WhatsApp group to the students. So what they so whatever they they have issues here, so they can uh, reach us like this. So this is the WhatsApp group of September. So they have the so they, while they are practicing their lab, so they will uh, share their uh, uh, queries or things. So we will respond to that and we will help them to resolve that issues. See, actually, uh, the pro uh, 
here it is all the real time scenarios and we'll uh, so we are working on two uh, two applications and on that we'll take all the scenarios scenario based uh, so the continuous integration for each and every tool in the on uh, in this devops so uh, if uh, anybody have any questions any anything any queries you have you can reach me here i can uh, can ask me also All right then. Uh, so I think we made the things clear regarding the uh, course and regarding the access on everything. Still, if you have any queries, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out to me or uh, reach out to Mr. Raj regarding career counseling and all or any other uh, queries. So we'll close here then and we'll continue tomorrow at the same time, 7.30. And uh, yeah. Thank you all. And uh, and one, one uh, another thing, uh, if you are not joined in the WhatsApp group, uh, this community, uh, so please join there. So you'll get all the updates there, uh, updates uh, in that one, or you can reach us directly. Uh, you'll get that num our numbers there. So if you are not joined, so they can uh, join in this WhatsApp. I share it in the chat. You'll get all the course updates here in this uh... Community. Because see, so some people they are some people they are not uh, registered, right? So they got the number some uh, some friends or reference, so they joined here. Uh, so so once we join here, we'll uh, keep on updating everything here. So you can you can contact us through this uh, WhatsApp community. Yes, please you can continue. Yeah, that's all from my end. Any technical queries, any doubts regarding any tools, you can reach out to me or post your queries on the community. Once you are registered, we'll be moving the students to another private group where you can post your queries during your hands-on day in and day out. So anything else, reach out to us. We are here to help you. Thank you all. Good day. Thank you all for joining on your Sunday. Good day, everyone. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you.